Good morning, here is the news at 10. First, the highlights. Lagos State Government embarks on assessment tour ahead commencement of e color system for Lekki Ekwe Corridor. Federal Government issues flood alert as Cameroon releases water from Lagdo Dam. On the foreign scene, Russia region orders evacuation after Ukraine drone attack. And in sport, Nigeria Egypt renew table tennis rivalry in Ethiopia. Now the details I am Delhi. The Lagos State Ministry of Transportation has again embarked on an assessment of its traffic management plan ahead of the Lekki Ekwe e up system set to commence by the 23rd of this month. Commissioner for Transportation, Uluwashim Oshiemi, who led the assessment, inspected the traffic situation and the level of compliance within the Lekki Free Trade Free Zone down to the Dangote Refinery loading area. Reiterating the purpose of the inspection tour, Oshiemi stated that the e of system, once operational, will tackle congestion and streamline the movement of goods and services within the Lekki Way Corridor by efficiently allocating resources and minimizing waiting time for trucks. Explaining the level of stakeholder engagement in alignment with the e of commencement date and enforcement plan, Oshiemi said the state government, through the Ministry of Transportation, has held several discussions on the importance of the e-call-up system and why it is the best solution for the corridor. The commissioner, who also expressed displeasure at the sight of recalcitrant truck operators lying up on the corridor refusing to access the loading base provided in the area, declared that they would face the consequences of non-compliance. In its continued efforts to sanitize the Lagos State Waterfront Corridor, the Lagos State Government has served controversial notices on some companies at Admiralty Way and Wanli Olateju in Lekki Phase 1. According to the Commissioner for Waterfront Infrastructure Development, Ekundayo Alibioshu, all the companies served are occupying the waterfront setbacks illegally thereby contravening Lagos State Waterfront Law No. 3 of 2009 for the regulation of waterfront development in Lagos State and connected purposes. Alim Yashu implored all concerned to report to the Ministry of Waterfront Infrastructure Development with available documents and titles authorizing them to use the setback, noting that failure to comply may result in the property being sealed or demolished. The Commissioner reiterated the commitment of the state government to provide infrastructure and maintain the Lagos State waterfront by harnessing resources to ensure a well-protected environment that is attractive to tourists and the people of the state. No fewer than 30,132 recovered, decommissioned, unserviceable and illicit arms and ammunition will be destroyed by the National Center for the Control of Small Arms in Light Weapons, NCCSALW. National Coordinator of the NCCSALW, Johnson Kukumo, who made this known at a workshop on gender mainstreaming in preventing the proliferation of small arms and light weapons in Nigeria and West Africa, said the weapons from the Nigerian Army, police and other sources will be destroyed by the end of September. He gave a breakdown of the figure as 3,383 3, arms, 26,749 calibers of ammunition, some of which were recovered from arms-bearing agencies of the government. Kokoma said the control of small arms and light weapons proliferation was not only a national concern, but also a matter of international importance. He added that the illegal flow of small arms and light weapons had devastating consequences. The Civil Society Action Coalition of edu on Education for All has called on the governors of the Southeast states to beef up security around public schools to protect them from all forms of attack. Zonal coordinator of the group in the zone, Yenis Ebuna, who advised during the 2024 International Day to Protect Education from Attacks, 
called on the governors to support the global initiative by taking intentional and proactive steps to achieve its set goals, beginning with putting the necessary policy framework in place through agenda setting in the Southeast Governors Forum. She said the theme for the 2024 International Day of Education, learning for lasting peace, is still very relevant in this discourse because every form of attack on education erodes the peace of the learner, the teacher, and the community where the school is located. Igmina tasked the governors to make protection of education from attacks a priority because attacks deprive learners of their fundamental rights to quality education, hamper the ability of teachers to play their roles and deliver their duties effectively, stop sustaining of generations by hampering planned programs for a sustainable future through knowledge and skills. And now to the rest of the stories, the federal government has alerted Nigerians to the release of water from the Lagdo Dam in Cameroon. Director General and Chief Executive Officer of the Nigeria Hydrological Services Agency, Omar Mohammed, in a statement, said the dam's regulated water releases commenced on September 17. According to the statement, the water discharge is anticipated to progressively escalate over the next seven days based on the inflow from the upstream Garua River. The NIHSA boss said there is no cause for alarm as major flooding downstream in Nigeria is not anticipated since the flow levels along the Benue River are still within cautionary limits. He said it is of utmost importance for all states bordering the Benue River system to heighten their vigilance and implement appropriate preparedness measures to mitigate potential flooding impacts. Mohammed added that the agency will continue to diligently monitor the flow conditions of the transboundary Benue River and the national inland rivers and consistently provide regular updates on water levels across major rivers to prevent further flood disaster. The Nigerian Financial Intelligence Unit, NFIU, has vowed to disrupt the financial channels used by terrorists and other criminal elements in the country. The agency stated that disrupting the financial channels of terrorists would weaken their ability to perpetrate further criminal activities. Director General of the NFIU, Hafsad Bakari, stated this in Abuja at a workshop on the investigation and prosecution of terrorism financing cases. Bakari explained that by analyzing transaction patterns, identifying suspicious activities and tracing funds across borders, it will be easier to uncover the sponsors and facilitators of terrorism. On his part, the Minister of Interior, Olubumi Tunji Ojo, said curbing the identity fraud in Nigeria and other countries in Africa would help reduce terrorism and other criminal activities. Tunji Ojo also emphasized that equal attention must be given to corporate identity to know the owners of companies in the country. The Nigeria Center for Disease Control and Prevention, NCDC, says more males are getting infected by MPOX in Nigeria. According to figures posted on the NCDC website, 67% of MPOX cases recorded since January have been in males. The figures released revealed that a total of 1,031 suspected cases have been reported across 47 local government areas in 23 states and the Federal Capital Territory, and 67 confirmed cases this year. The age and sex distribution in the report showed that children under 5 years old are the most affected, followed by the 26 to 30 and 46 to 50 age groups. The NCDC said there have been no fatalities from the disease this year compared to two recorded in 2022 and seven deaths in 2023. Nigeria recently received a donation of 10,000 doses of gynomes, mpox vaccine from the United States government. In our to foreign news, a partial evacuation has been ordered in Russia's Sver region after a massive Ukrainian drone attack sparked a fire there. The local governor, Igor Rodnier, said 
emergency services in the town of Torapat were trying to localize the blaze caused by falling drone wreckage. Rodenia did not say whether there were any casualties. Torapat lies about 380 kilometers northwest of Russia's capital Moscow and 470 kilometers north of the border with Ukraine. Overnight attacks were also reported in Russia's western Bransk, Kursk, Orin and Smolensk regions. In our sport, the intense rivalry between Africa's top table tennis nations, Nigeria and Egypt, will be reignited at the 2024 ITTF Africa Championships in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, from October 12 to 19. Serving as qualifiers for the 2024 ITTF Mixed Team Cup in China and the 2025 World Championships in Qatar, the tournament will feature top teams and regional champions competing in two team events and five individual events, which are men's teams, women's teams, men's singles, women's singles, men's doubles, women's doubles, and mixed doubles. Returning to Ethiopia after 24 years, the local organizing committee promises an exciting competition as the reigning champions, Egypt, will face fierce competition from arch-rival Nigeria, along with strong contenders like Tunisia and Algeria. President of the African Table Tennis Federation, ATTF, Khaled El Sali, expressed confidence in Ethiopia's preparedness highlighting their successful hosting of the Eastern Regional Championships in 2023. And that is our news at 10. Just before we go, maintain adequate distance from the vehicle ahead of you to avoid collision. You can follow us and like all our various social media platforms, X a Traffic Radio 961, Facebook, Lagos Traffic Radio 96.1 FM, Instagram, Lagos Traffic Radio 961, Subscribe and watch your news and programs live on YouTube at Traffic Radio 961. You can also visit our website www.trafficradio961.ng. Did you know that the Sawolo administration constructed watchtowers with alarm bells and perimeter fences in model colleges? Can you get more details on the Lagos State Government website? To end the news, are the highlights of the major stories. The Lagos State Ministry of Transportation has again embarked on an assessment of its traffic management plan ahead of the Lekki Epwe e call up system set to commence by 23rd of this month. The federal government has alerted Nigerians to the release of water from the Lagdo Dam in Cameroon. We also told you that a partial evacuation has been ordered in Russia's Zver region with a massive Ukrainian drone attack sparked a fire there. And in sport, the intense rivalry between Africa's top table tennis nations, Nigeria and Egypt, will be reignited at the 2024 ITTF African Championships in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, from October 12 to 19. For contact with the newsroom, send a message to info at trafficradio961.ng. That is the news broadcast compiled by Abiola Fabolagu. I am Dili Agadumo. Good morning. Thank you for listening.